everybody we're getting ready for today's video which is going to be making the journal for um, from Shirley's cottage columns and I came back to pop in to tell you first oh my gosh um, so I don't I don't like to watch them all the way back but I have to see if I've cut you guys off or not that I'm gonna edit or fix it but just so I can try harder next time and um, Okay, I let's do this. Let's make it a game. So during the whole video, whenever you can see me, I have something at the bottom of my lip. I never looked in the mirror after I did from Shirley's Cottage. I just went in the house and got ready. See, even now, went in the house and got ready and started um, doing from Shirley's Cottage. And then as I watched it back, I'm like, what is that in the bottom of my lip? So you guys are going to be kind of zoomed in focused on that and you're going to be wondering the same thing what is the bottom of her lip so i'm going to give you three three um ideas and then you guys can try to guess if you guess right i told you that i was bringing back the tassel next weekend not next weekend august august uh the second weekend of august but this is what i decided <laughs> I'm going to give away a tassel to whoever guesses what is really on the bottom of my, of my lip. So if you guess correctly, I will put your name in a hat and draw, but you have to guess correctly and you can only guess one of these things in the comments. So it is either dried glue that I had on my hands while we're making the journal that I maybe wiped my lip and there's dried glue on the bottom of my lip. It could be dried up lipstick that, you know, didn't wear off, or it could be a smear of stained berries from the berries that I picked and showed you from Shirley's Cottage. So those are your choices. You can only guess one. I looked in the mirror well enough. At first watching the video, I thought, what is that? When I looked in the mirror, I figured out what it was. So it's either dried up lipstick, it's dried up uh, berries that I was eating, or it's dried up glue. As a matter of fact, there's some glue on my finger right there so you can see the dried up glue can look like what was ever on the bottom of my lip. Now that's not a clue because you have three choices. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and before this I want you guys to notice what I got finished. If you've been following me for a long time I won't make it another guess or another thing, but I'm hoping that you guys notice that I finally, 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 finally got my Black Thread Studio pillow done and made into a pillow and got the tassels done on the corners. So since I had to do tassels for those, I decided that I would make an extra one and whoever guesses what is on the bottom of my lip will get a tassel. So you guys enjoy the video. I really had fun making it. I am so excited about how it turned out and I hope you are too and that you get to make your own. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, it's me again. I know I said um, enjoy, go watch the video, but I thought I would come back and sh actually show you my pillow instead of just putting in a picture of it. So, ta-da! I don't know why it took me so long to get done, but um, because I never remember to say subscribe or thumbs up or whatever, ring the bell, like it, there's your reminder. So that is my Black Thread Studio pillow. The back, um, I had always wanted to do a, a, a quilt out of a T-block and I had one T-block done and for Teske, my last name, and I decided to use that on the back of the pillow. And I did it envelope style. I used the button as a closure. And I decided I was going to use, um, I'll show you there, my tassels out of the same yarn that I'm making your tassels out of. So that is my pillow. Anything else I wanted to say about it? No. It has a yo-yo on it. And once again... If you guys can guess what was on my bottom lip during the whole video that you're going to be watching, um, I have your tassel ready. 
So this one um, has a yellow safety pin with a lemon charm on it. And all you have to do as a reminder is tell me on the bottom of my lip during the whole video if you think it's dried lipstick, if you think it's stains from the berry berries I was eating, or if you think it's dried glue, because it could be any three of those. So I really am going to let you go now and tell you to enjoy the video, and um, we'll see you later. Bye. Hi, everybody. Welcome. It's Kelly, and we are in Black Thread Studio right at this very moment. And let's see, what are we doing today? On the chalkboard, episode 27, my recipe journal from Shirley's Cottage. So if you did see from Shirley's Cottage today, then you already know that we're going to do a journal, my version of a junk journal that we can use to put all of um, Sh from Shirley's Cottage recipes in. I always say write them down. You know, if you're going to write them down, here's the time to get your paper and pencils ready. And I've thought about it. I said it and you guys responded. So today we're doing a junk journal. There are so many videos up on YouTube on how to do journals. Um, I have focused more on fabric journals, uh, fabric books that uh, I, I plan to do at some point. Um, some videos ago, I actually went through and showed you all my fabric books. And when I did my little visit and tour with Cece from The Thread Gatherer, we talked about the fabric books. That's how Cece and I met, was in one of my fabric book classes. And um, Cece and I keep bouncing ideas around on um, doing something with that someday. So um, if you're new with me, welcome. Welcome and thank you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate every single one of you, and that is no joke because um, I'm just out here winging it and chatting and sharing with you what I like to do, um, which is different things, mainly mainly stitching, cross-stitching. I love handwork, quilting, um, that type of thing. Today we're going to do the journals, so uh, there is a lot of paper, but I plan to add some fabric and do some stitching. So welcome and I hope you enjoy today's little video. So let me just show you a gathering of what I have. I haven't really started anything yet and I haven't done this this version before. It's all up in my mind. I've gathered different ideas and things that I've seen and this is going to be my version of a little cool junk journal that you can add. Um, the idea is that I'm going to do uh, paper punched holes with um, the <laughs> okay you guys I bought a whole thing of these you know the rings that you get those rings I bought a whole thing of them from Amazon so that I can put all my floss on it when I'm cross stitching you know do all my kit it up and get all my bundles do you think that I can find those anywhere do you guys do, <laughs> do, you guys do that <laughs> so anyway I actually had this was full of ribbons and I am gonna I was gonna put ribbons on my little rings anyway but I actually had to go steal these off of one of my fabric books from down in black thread studio basement and um, it wasn't easy to get these off because they are jam-packed full of ribbons um, but when we get done I'm gonna try to use the, <laughs> use these on the journal and the idea is with the with the rings and the punched holes that as we go, if you are really having fun with From Shirley's Cottage and the recipes, that you won't be limited to how many pages we put together by sewing them or, you know, however we, we end up putting them, to, them together in other journals. This way they will be have a hole punch and you can just keep adding them to the to the journal. So depending on what size ring you, ring you use, you could really stack it up and, and have a lot of pages in there. So that's my idea. Okay, I'm going to show you some supplies that I have done, that I have gathered, and then, and then I think I'm going to kind of shut it down and try to do a couple pages to make sure that it's going to work the way that I envision that it will. And if it does, then I'm going to share that with you. So 
um, as I as I can see myself in in the camera there, I'm I'm gonna back up and tell you guys today I have on um, one of my I actually took an old frame I don't know if you guys can see and I talked about this in one of the floss tubes I did but I actually took an old a frame that I had and I had so many people wear progressive lenses which is the way to go and for those of that of you that don't know I'm an optician I have been for I don't know 35 36 years a very good one by the way and um, let me just say an optician is more than just going to I don't know if I should say any names but I call them the fast food places um, I I take so much pride in what we do and how important it is to have the correct measurements the correct prescription to really know what you're doing with someone with someone's vision that I just want to say that um, the people that uh, really know what they are doing and work at a private office um, that's the way to go <laughs> so anyway I um, I messed around myself and I had a bifocal made just for home with the line just for home so that I could use it for my hand stitching and my cross stitching. I had a mega mega bifocal ad power put in the bottom. So that, um, and I do have a magnifier too. I know I'm getting off on this tangent, but so that when um, I'm sewing or hand stitching, I can look up and see the TV and look down and have that mega bifocal that I need. So for those of you that are wearing the big magnifiers over, um, and that works for you, but if you want to be able to look out and see TV or see what's going on around you without having to look or flip up that magnifier, um, I will say this is the way to go. I know a couple people responded that after I talked about it last time that they did go and do that. And um, so anyway, I just want to tell you I'm wearing my, my mega bifocal today in case I have to get up, get close up <laughs> and do something. Anyway. Okay, here's another thing. I realize, and I've said this all along, I know I cut some things off when I'm showing you how to do something. For the life of me, I cannot figure it out because right now you are in full view. I can see my chalkboard, I can see my head, and I can see, you know, all the way down to here. Now, if I raise this up, you're gonna see it. If I hold it down here, I am going to see if this gets cut off. So please, please forgive me if I'm showing you something and it's getting cut off and you're at home kind of hollering at me, Kelly, we can't see it. Kelly, you're cutting it off. Believe me, I I have, if I could figure out what I'm doing wrong, I will, I will remedy it. So all I can say to you is today, I hope I don't cut anything off. So let me show you what I have gathered, and um, if if you are going to go along with me, you can either gather a few items or you can write a few things down. Or if you have an idea and you want to add something, put it in the comments. You know something that you would use or or do different. So or that you are going to do different. Okay, you always need um, you know coffee or tea at hand. So I have that. I have, I took this, I borrowed this from work. I have a three hole punch. This is a two hole punch. I don't know why in my mind I was thinking I only wanted to do two holes because I think it'll be easier to, I guess easier to add um, and just do two of the rings. But these holes are so close together it's going to end up being, we are going to use a regular um, letter size piece of paper. What is that? 8 by eight by 10 Yeah, 8 by 10 piece of paper. And it will be folded in half. So that is how I'm going to do, that's the size of the journal. So by the time we punch these, you know, the holes are going to be closer together here instead of, you know, spread out like this which we could do, I, as we go along, I'm gonna decide. I do have a single hole punch in case I wanna do that and spread them out. I'm gonna punch one with the two hole and see how it turns out. If these rings are gonna to be too close together, number one, I might not be able to have all those ribbons on them um, or we might end up doing the one hole. 
or you could do three hole, whatever you want to do. So I haven't decided yet. We're doing this together. So I have a couple different um, punch holes. I have the, the binder rings. Any size that you want is going to work. If you use a humongous one, it might be floppy at first, unless you're thinking that you're going to do a whole ton of pages at one time. Um, I'm just going to kind of do a medium, medium size. So before I show you the papers, let me show you what else I have here. And I have a lot of scrapbooking things downstairs in boxes. I thought, I just want to keep this simple. I don't want to get all that stuff out. Um, I don't want to make it too time consuming or complicated. I just want to do this and have fun with it. Um, so I just grabbed a few things. I am sure as I go along, I'm going to add some things to my pages and kind of really make them junky and more fun by adding things. And as I do from Shirley's Cottage, as I add those pages, I might just show you each page that I do that I have that recipe on. So that would be kind of fun. Okay, what else did I grab? For closure, I, grab, I grabbed a couple different types of ribbons. I have just a, a plain black, and then I love black and cream. So I have this one, and I also have my um, black and white baker's twine that Cheryl so kindly sent me. Hi, Cheryl. Um, I hope she's doing well in her new her new digs, her new place, and some ribbons. I have a couple different kinds of glue. I just have some glue sticks that I had from the dollar store. I have my trusty liquid stitch that is always, always, always a staple in my sewing room that I use for everything. Permanent, dries clear, the best stuff ever. And then just because I have it here, a temporary adhesive that I use for um, fabric when I'm doing some applique and things. I am going to try to use this on paper. A few pieces that I'm going to put together to make it a little bit thicker. Um, I mean, it says temporary. If I'm doing it on paper, it's, it's going to be stuck. But what I'm going to do is sew around the edges. I think this is, um, you know, meant for fabric. Like if you wash, when you wash it, it's going to come out. Okay, so I have three different kinds of glue. Just for fun, oh, I have um, a really cool, big, is that not the coolest button you've ever seen? Okay, I hate, <laughs> I still have the tag on the back. I'm trying to think where I got this at because I would never in my life spend $15 on a button. So I'm trying to think. This had to have been something really special, and I think in my memory, I know when I got this. Number one, that orange, that burnt orange. It's funny because I'm not crazy about like a bright, bright orange, but that burnt orange that reminds me of like an Arizona sky when it has the pinks and oranges mixed in with it and that mother of pearl. When Paige got married, she got married in Chicago, we went to a really cool place, I think in Lincoln Park, that was all all ribbons. And anyway, we got the ribbon for her, whatever we did, her invitations and her bouquet. And we got a bunch of ribbons and I am pretty sure that I got this button there. And that's the only reason I would have spent $15 on it. So I thought I've been saving it, what, 11, 12 years now, and I thought it's time to use it. Um, what could be more special than using it for the closure on the front of From Shirley's Cottage? So I'm using that button. I have um, just a black ink pad. If you're a scrapbooker, you know how they used to distress the edges. I think I might do a little bit of that in case I want to add a little bit of shush, shush color to pages. Um, a few colors of paint, uh, kind of smoky blues and gray. I was going to use this on something else that I'm not going to use it for. In case we need an all, <laughs> I am going to use the paper punch. I was thinking, I you know, we would use the all and I would stitch, do the signature pages and, and stitch them in and do like a fabric um, kind of binding on it. But I'm not going to do that. We're going to do it a different way, as I described already. I have pinking shears, 
just in case we want to do something fun with the edges. For my scrapbooking days, I also do have some other scissors that have like a scalloped edge and things, but I continually go back to the pinking shears. And then I have, um, I used this quite a bit too, staples. And I actually have these kind of limey green staples that I thought might be fun. So let's look at the paper. What I did is um, this morning, I just took some white paper and I just brushed it with coffee and then I laid them outside to dry. This somehow is gonna be the cover. I found, um, I, there's so many different things that you could do. But I did it so I would have a front and a back. All my pages that you see if I'm holding them folded like that, they aren't actually gonna be folded. I'm cutting everything in half and they will put be put together on the binder rings. So we'll move along and do that. But this is gonna be my cover. So this is what I'm going to do. If you guys want to do the same cover that I'm doing, I am calling it um, my, oh, I'm calling it my collection of recipes from Shirley's Cottage. And I typed that up and printed it off, if you can see that. And again, I just brushed these with coffee this morning and set them out to dry. And what I thought was that I would cut that out and somehow glue this on the front, but that was too big. I didn't want it to cover my onions that much. So I made a smaller one that I'm gonna use. And I decided not to trash this one. I'm actually gonna use this one as one of my, one of my pages. So before I go too far, I will tell you, if you guys want to use the onions either as the cover or in your book and you also want to use my collection of recipes from Shirley's Cottage you can either print up your own if you happen to like these if you email me at blackthreadstudio at yahoo.com I will gladly send you attachment that has both of these on there so that you can print those off and use them okay I'll remind you at the end that we can do that so along with that um, I printed off, that's the picture of my mom and my gram. It turned out horrible, horrible. But I decided I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use that, coffee stain. And then um, at work, we have a pile of paper that we try to recycle that, you know, sometimes things go through the printer and they just have like, you know, the end of something on the edges that you printed. So I grabbed just a couple off the top of the pile at work that I'm gonna use. I actually have uh, this weekend's Mary Mary Quite Contrary, and I'll show you how I'm gonna use those. I'm not gonna put this one in the book, but I just wanna show you, because I didn't have any blank recipe cards. Um, I was looking for just some blank index cards that you could brush with coffee or do whatever you wanted. This one actually is um, a recipe that I have. Doesn't this sound good? Roxas ricotta cookies and white butter icing. Ooh. I'm not going to put this one in there because it's Roxas recipe. I have this in my recipe box, but isn't that a really, really cute recipe card? So... You could also, as we're going along, use recipe cards and just put them in your pages. I'm gonna mix mine up and do it all different. I also grabbed just a paper bag, but we are right next door to Rosati's at work, which is has Italian pizza. And I just think it would be so cool, since it is food, I'm going to somehow cut that up and use that. Also, because it's food, and I love the colors, I got this at work. Can you tell we eat a lot at work? Um, Chili's to-go bag. The red and green, and that. So somehow I'm gonna use that as a page. I also went through, we had some old Food Network 
some old Weight Watcher books, Eating Well. Do I have all the Weight Watchers here? Anyway, um, what I did, these are magazines that are like a couple years old. They've been sitting down in our lunchroom at work, so I took these. I ripped off the, the covers because they're a little bit stiffer that would be nice to use as pages. And I am actually going to use these like this. If I if this doesn't pertain to recipe, what I'm gonna do, and I'll show you now, is I went through and I ripped out of those magazines anything that I thought was a cool picture of food. Aren't these just beautiful? Just beautiful images that I thought, that one, I just like that it said heart and soul. So when I use these, I have many of them. I don't care if they are right side up. I don't care if they're gonna be sideways. What I'm gonna do is actually glue, glue this flimsy paper to the back of this. So I'm kind of using it. This will be cut in half and I'll use this as a page and this as a page. I don't care that this is going sideways. I just think it adds to the kind of quirkiness that this is going to be. I'll just show you a few more pages. Cherry pie. I like this one because it says sweet memories. It might be sideways. Summer sides. I thought I could put some of the maybe one of the summer recipes on that one. So all of these I'm going to use, but again, it's only going to be this size. And, oh, the other thing that I had that I grabbed, are I have some of these initials left over from my scrapbooking days that I think on the cover I'm going to put Kelly's, you know, put Kelly, my collection of recipes from Shirley's Cottage. So, that's what I'm gonna start on. I'm gonna kind of go through and maybe get the covers done. I don't know, I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do the covers. I, th I think I'm gonna do them on a piece of um, cardboard, an actual piece of cardboard box that I have, just the front and the back cover. So let me go play around with that. If you wanna gather some things and see what you have, if you wanna start thinking about how you wanna do yours, gather up magazines, do whatever. I am gonna be back just like that. Okay, I'm back. I have um, the front piece cut out. So I thought I might as well do this with you. I'm gonna cut out the back. So um, here's the dreaded part. I hope I don't cut you off. Okay, let me bring you all the way down to the cutting mat. I'm trying to get you down as far as I can go. Okay, so I did use a box that I just brought home from work. I have, this is an old cutting mat that I have that I use for things like this. Um, when I use the um, adhesive spray, I'll actually spray right, right on here. I'm not using it for any fabric or anything, so I don't care how messy it gets. Um, I actually have an old um, ruler it doesn't really matter for that. That's not gonna get broken but or ruined. But I do have an old rotary cutter and I do use this one just for paper. So I know it because it's my red handled one. So on the cover, I kind of really like um, that box look. And I thought about doing pink to edge edges, but I'm not going to. I am going to stitch this onto the board and I kind of wanted just a more raw look. Um, of course, you guys, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do with yours, this is totally an expression of, you know, something that you want to keep your recipes in. And hey, if you don't want to just do from Shirley's Cottage. Okay, can you guys, I'm hoping that you can see that. The board that I'm using, if I use a letter size paper that I'm cutting in half and I wanted my cover a little bit bigger, the cover is going to be six and a half by nine and a half. So right now I'm cutting my nine and a half 
length. And I'm just doing it just like I would uh, measure and cut fabric. Pushing a little bit harder just because of the, the board, of course. And then I will cut this one down to six and a half. And then we'll start putting the top together here. I realize you're probably right on the edge, but I'm just cutting this for right now. So. Okay, six and a half. The only thing about doing this, because I am gonna be stitching on paper, is that you are gonna to have to probably change your needle. Oh, look. <laughs> I didn't realize it had all that shipping stuff on the back. I'm gonna go over the top of this, but I don't wanna see this one, so I'm gonna to try to peel that off. And if it shows, I guess we'll cover it up with, what, a yo-yo? You guys, oh, well, you know there will be yo-yos on here somewhere on the cover. Okay, I don't think you'll see that. No. I'll actually use this one as the back. You won't be able to, you might be able to see that a little bit back there. But Now, I like mine more raw. Um, I just you know, folded and folded and ripped my pages. Same thing with this. I'm just gonna fold it a couple times and get it down to a different size so that I can use, and we will figure out. I think I'm actually gonna stitch this down as well. I don't know. Should I save that? I'm saving all these little pieces just in case I wanna do something with them on the inside. So we'll see. I'll also tell you that um, I pretty much keep like an Ecru cream colored thread in my machine all the time in the top and in my bobbin that I use for almost everything. Unless I'm working, you know, on a darker quilt and I want, I need to match the thread for something, but um, I have this really cool variegated thread that I'll show you that I decided to put in there as I'm stitching. And I also put it in the bobbin. I wound a bobbin with the same colored so that when I stitch, not only will you see that variegated thread here, we're gonna see the backs too, so. See, is that gonna bother me? I might, you know what I might do? Do you see I'm looking at that um, tape that's on there from the packaging? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll put a, okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking you guys. Okay, I just got an idea. Let me think about this for a minute. I don't know if I'll look at this, but let's see. I also have scissors that I use for paper, pretty much uh, like the rotary cutter and these scissor scissors. They're older items that I used on fabric and they got dull, so I just switched them over to using them on paper. Okay, this is what I'm thinking. I love that ribbon. Okay, if I wanna cover that, how about, can I do that? Will that cover it all the way if I do that and then flip it over? be the front and that would be right on the inside. Okay, you guys, let's do this. Okay, I'm going to cut it a little bit longer so I can trim it down. Do you guys see what I'm doing? This is the fun part of doing things and creating, for me anyway. I like to wing it. I mean, you, you need some kind of plan, but you know, if the plan goes awry or it doesn't work, um, it's gotta, it has to be fun to be able to swap it out. Okay, so to cover this tape, which, you know, actually would be okay. So this is gonna be the inside of my cover, right? 
as I'm lining it up to make sure, I think that if that stripe folds over right on that edge and I can have that, just that little piece on the front, I think that's going to be good. So what I need to do is I'm just going to spray that and I'm going to line it up so that that is on the edge if I can do it. I'm hoping you guys can see that. Should I say that this whole thing, this whole video, say I hope it's not getting cut off? Okay, so there's, I don't know if you can see what I just did, but I, I marked, I kind of folded where that black stripe is. So I get that lined up, that might be a little bit tacky on the back. Fold this over. Um, okay, this does bother me a little bit, but I'm going to show you why it's not going to matter. See where um, I pulled it too hard and it's kind of kinked up there? I'm going to cover that up with that button. So you're not going to see it. I did get a little spray glue right on the ends here, so hopefully that's gonna kind of stick together tight. And it's not brain surgery, right, you guys? It doesn't matter if it's perfect. Okay, now, yeah, that's not straight and perfect, but I'm gonna say I don't care because if I put that there, it's going to cover a part of my onion. And if I pull this down farther. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay. I'm going to spray the back of my paper. Probably would be better to be doing this outside or have a mask on, but I can honestly tell you that while I'm spraying, while I'm spraying, I hold my breath. Okay, now we can get Shirley's. Uh, my collection of recipes from Shirley's Cottage. I'm going to put right there. And this is basically just to, and I could use the glue stick too, but I'm just trying to tack that down and it will keep it in place as I stitch. So as long as I'm here, I'm going to get, I'm going to not make the back that fancy. I'm just going to put this on. If I decide that I'm going to do that later, I can always do that. But I will stitch this at the same time. Then I'm going to stitch the front. Pressing that down. I have one of those uh, Pampered Chef squeegee things. Where do I have it at? I should have looked for it before I started, but. Okay, do you guys want to go over with me while I stitch it? If you don't like this um, kind of junk journal style and you like a little bit more perfect, um, that's not what we're doing today. <laughs> okay. So, it's, it's going to be, um, it's probably going to be a tough go trying to get through the, um, cardboard here, but I'm trying to decide if I want to stitch on that ribbon. Okay, I'm going to start down here in the corner. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to start here because I'm going to start right in the middle where I'm going to put that button. So if there's any kind of crossover or funny ends that meet up after um, I stitch all the way around, then the button will cover it. So my a very, very favorite stitch on my Janome 
is kind of this big, um, it's almost like a an offset cross. Let me find it. In case you have the Janome machine, I'm gonna tell you in just a second what number it is. It's mode two and it's number 70. So let's go to mode two, number 70 stitch. And once I get this done, I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm gonna start in the middle and there we go. I hope it's, I hope it goes through this cardboard okay. That's all I can say. instead of here, so I think I just went crooked on my, on my stitches. This thread is brighter than I remembered, so I'm not sure that that's the look that I wanted to go for, but it's done now, so I'm going to leave it. Um, but I'm going to, um, actually, let me show you what I'm going to do here. I am going to since this is going to be covered up by that button, this isn't going to pull through as easy as I thought it would on the cardboard. But what I'm trying to do is get that back thread. What I'll have to do is instead of just cutting this thread off at the back, I'm going to um, string it back up and I'm going to cut it off here because then the button will cover it and then you won't see any kind of crazy threads on the back front. So this is one of the things I'm doing. This is the Harder magazine um, covers that I ripped off that I'm going to show you. Um, so on the prettier pictures that I want, and they're so flimsy, I am gluing onto the front and the back. And then I'll show you a few that I already cut out. I just have to find what I did with them they are. So what I'm doing is if the binder part is going to be over here with the rings and this is going to be my page that I'm looking at, this is where I'm going to put the recipe, either on a recipe card or I'm just going to glue my mom's column in or you could do just a piece of paper with this as the background. But then I'm making sure that when you flip it to the next page and this is where the recipe is going to be, I want something really pretty on the back side, like those tomatoes. I don't care if they're headed the right direction or not. And then when you flip this one, look at that pretty pesto and basil. So that's that's what I'm doing. So when I'm laying them out, I'm stacking them so that I know that this side is where the recipe is gonna go. And then when I open it up and it's the back of the next page that I have a pretty picture. So right now, I'll show you what I have stacked and ready to go are these. I've already punched the holes in them. And I'll get a few more done. And then we're almost, we're almost ready to put it together.
I'm not even measuring. And some of these I'm using the pinking shears. And some of them I'm using the straight edge scissors. And basically, I know that this cover was a little bit bigger um, than my regular size pages, so I wanted to cut it down just a little bit. And I really don't care if they're all the exact same size or not. I'm just going to put a crease in that one so I know where I'm going to cut it. So again, I will see which side I want to be my back side and which side I want my recipe to go on. And I'm just going to keep going like that until I have a whole handful of pages. Okay, so I've been working. <laughs> I, um, I got my front and my back stitched, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But I also did get a handful of pages ready to put in. Now, I do have leftover um, magazine cutouts that I'm going to save and keep adding to this. But I'll show you what I have so far. I just cut, um, let's see, it would go this way. I just cut different types of papers, the, the coffee stained. Um, these are the little bit heavier that I I glued a couple to the um, covers so that, you know, you could also use like um, old old files, you know, that cardboard, um, card stock. You could do a lot of different things. I do have some colored card stock down in the basement. I might add some of that to this. But um, what I'm going to do is as I go along, whenever I do from Shirley's Cottage every weekend, I'm going to add that page to the book. And at the end of Shirley's Cottage, I will show you what recipe I added. This is going to be a really good way for me to get rid of all the newspapers that I have stocked, uh, stacked up in the tubs downstairs and get these organized. Um, before I forget, the one thing that I was thinking, which would be really easy to do, is just do some kind of cool tab. And if I do those in the future, I'll show you. Tab to separate out, you know, desserts, savory, sweet, you know, however, dinners, breakfast, however you want to separate these out. But I have a whole handful of these. I have a recipe ready to put in that we'll talk about. And uh, I think that's it. So let's start getting it put together. Okay, what I did on the front is I ended up, um, let me show you if I can see. I wanted to use that heart uh, motif. And as I was stitching, I think it was a little bit th too thick and too much to keep going through the cardboard. So it kept, it broke off. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to cover that up. Um, and then as well, down here in this area, there's some punctures where I was trying a different stitch in it as well. It was too thick to go through the cardboard. So what I did is I used that really cool cross. And then on the inside, because once I held my button up, I kind of had mentioned, I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I kind of had mentioned that this thread was brighter. It's more primary colors than I remembered it to be. I think I actually grabbed the wrong spool of thread. I had one that was more um, burnt orange and blacks. And I don't know how I didn't see that when I grabbed it. But anyway, so what I did to tie in more of the orange, I came in with kind of a, a really pretty orange feather stitch that I added just to tie some more of the orange in there. And with this button, because it has this big shank on the back, I poked a hole and I will do this with you in a little bit here. I stuck that through and where this comes out on the other side, I'm actually gonna just put a ribbon through there and tie it off. This inside back cover, if this bothers you, you can always cover it with something. Um, like a solid, 
you know, piece of fabric or a solid piece of, let me think about that. Do I want to leave it like that or I might cover it? You know what? Before we shut down today, I think I am going to cover mine and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so we'll be back. We'll be back to talk about this. But what I also did was I went through with the blank ink pad and I distressed the edges and I really like the way that looks. So I saved, I saved the back one to do with you. I went ahead and stitched it on. Now I think I'm covering this one actually with some orange cardstock that I have downstairs. So this will be solid on the back. This one is the back page. And that is pretty clean. I like the way those stitches look, so I'm just going to leave this one as is. So we'll get to that. I decided to do, I did not use the two-hole punch because someone at work had it taped to the size that they are using it for at work to, um, sorry about that, to get all the things that they are punching for our files in a uniform punch, and I didn't want to switch that. So what I did is... I measured two inches down from each side. So it was two inches down here, and then I think this one measured at seven and a half inches down because it was nine and a half inches. And what I did is I marked it with the awl where I wanted to puncture it. I just put a little mark in it, and I came through with just my single hole punch. It wasn't that hard to do. And then when I came through and did the other pages, what I did is I kind of made a template by just holding this up and I um, came in with a marker and I just drew my circles and then punched my holes. I did stack these up a few at a time and punched them. So that's how I did that. Okay. Before we cover this up, I wanted to show you, um, and this is why I think mistakes are good, the two places where my thread broke here and somewhere down in here, and there's some funny holes. We're going to pick out some pretty little pearly buttons that will match the little pearl inside of this, and we're going to cover those up. So this is where you want um, that trusty liquid stitch glue. So I have to grab that. And uh, you guys are gonna help me pick out some buttons. Now, I didn't take time to move anything. This pad underneath me is a little tacky because I was spraying all those pages on it. Um, actually, do I still need, I don't need this for anything. So let me move it out of the way because it is tacky. So I am done with this. I actually have the back of this one marked crafts. So I know that that's the, the one that I used for that. So, okay, let's look at some buttons. I think I'm gonna dump them out on the back of this sheet just so we can see them. So you won't, you won't see them up, up against my distressed white table here. But what I'm looking for, and I really love the buttons that still have the old original thread in there. And I just want something little to cover up those spots. So I think that's a good one. Oh, goodness gracious, look at this, you guys. Let me see if I can even show you that. This is a little covered you see that? It's covered with fabric that's all worn away. And I do believe, I'm looking for my spots that got, you know, that doesn't show up that good on that one. I want something shinier. I thought that was really cool and I would use it. Um, okay, here's another really good old button that still has the, the old thread in there. So... I am going to use that. Let me get these picks. That didn't work. <laughs> I just made the biggest mess. <laughs> I don't know if that is a mess because those look kind of pretty. 
Okay. Once again, the liquid stitch glue by Dritz. I get this at uh, Joann Fabrics. It is expensive. I think it's about 10. It used to be 9.99. It might even be more now, like 12.99 a bottle. Um, and I always try to use my coupon for it. So fingers crossed that as I'm doing this, you guys can see it, which there's not a whole lot to see, but these two little spots where I did um, kind of rip up the cardboard because my sewing machine didn't like the stitch I was trying to use. I'm just going to put a little dab of this and put that button right on. What I love about the liquid stitch is it dries clear and um, it's pretty forgiving as far as, you know, if you get a little bit too much on there, but also once I give it a little good push, of course you want to let it dry really good, but it will already be uh, staying on there. So I covered up that hole and I just covered up that hole. Now, when I punched through here and it caught some of the um, some of the thread as well as these holes and on the back of these holes where I didn't catch any threads, I don't know if you can see, it might be a little bit shiny on the cardboard. I went around each one. I put some of the liquid stitch glue on the, the ends of all my threads so that they wouldn't come undone, you know, kind of fray off since this is going to be used and be turning back and forth. I also put some glue around the edges here on the inside, on both sides of the cardboard on the whole. I thought that that would keep it a little bit more um, put together as it's being flipped back and forth. Now I didn't want to do it on the covers, but on these pages, I am going to um, probably go to office supply and buy those, um, you know, the little tap tabs that you put on the hole so that they don't rip out when you use the binder rings. So there's my front and here's my back. Before we put this together, I am going to go grab some, um, what am I grabbing? Cardstock so that we can cover up the back of this and I think that's going to look better. I did find orange, the orange card stock that I was looking for, but I did just find this orange paper. So, oh, let's see. I don't know if I'm going to use my, Okay, I'm just going to trace because I actually want to cut this a little bit smaller than the top. So I'm just kind of getting an idea here. Uh, that didn't really mark. Let me remark that. Just a little bit darker. And I think I'm going to pink the edges. So I'm going to cut right inside that line. And then it will end up being a little bit smaller, but not too small. So that it will still cover up um, that string, all that thread on the inside. It doesn't bother me that much. I wasn't planning on covering it but I ended up stitching on the front a lot more than I thought, and it just might have a little bit cleaner finish if I cover it this way. So I'm just gonna pink three edges. Let me see how that is as far as the size of this goes. When I see it from the side, I'm gonna cut, cut it a little bit shorter here. I'm just going to cut that a little bit shorter. And then as well, I'm going to cut it shorter on this side because I don't want any of it hanging out on the front. I just want to make sure that um, that string is being covered. It's not even going to be straight, and I don't care. 
you know, if, if that, if those things, um, are more important to you, then you can measure, you know, what size you want, but here's what I'm going to do. We're going to spray it and I'm going to cover up that back and then I'm going to come back and then I'm going to punch these holes. So what I need to do is grab my mat again real quick. I'm just going to do this real quick. That one I'm spraying a little bit better than I did on some of those inside pages, just because I want to make sure this is going to hold. I am getting that lined up a little bit better than what I, what I normally care about. Okay, I'm going to get this tacky thing out of the way. And just press that really good, smooth that out. Oh, I was going to... Um, I planned on using the sink pad to kind of make those edges a little bit darker and I forgot. So let me see if I can just do it this way. I'm just kind of rubbing that along. Okay, and then I was also going to do that to the back. And what I'm doing is I'm just holding the pad up against the edge and kind of just rubbing it. You know, that's a certain look. So if you don't like that, you know, you don't have to do it. And I'm going to do it on this side as well. There's something that's really fun about that. <laughs> And the, for the back side with just that one row of stitching, I really think that looks pretty. I'm going to leave that. But I am I am happy that I decided to cover up the inside cover. That does look better, doesn't it? Okay, let's get that hole punched. And then I'll show you what else we're going to do. To So I'm just lining it up, lining it up with the hole that's already there. And that got punched. We're not done with the cover yet. When I was down looking for my cardstock, I found this in a drawer that I saved. I'm not even sure where I got this from. You know what? I think I got it from CC, from the Thread Gather. I'm almost positive that when I ordered, um, I ordered one of her um, beeswax, you know, thread conditioners, and I think it came in that. Look how cute that bag is with that little kind of tape stamp on it. I was saving that and I think that this is the perfect place to put it is right inside the cover. If I do decide I want to keep any little any little notes or any extra little something about my mom or a recipe, I can um, certainly do that. Now I'm not going to spray this one. I think I'm going to use um, the stick glue because I don't want to get that whole thing tacky. But I'm going to leave that same little fold in there that Cece had. And I'm just going to go all the way across. If I would have thought this through and thought to do this, I could have um, stitched this on to this side before I did the front. But that would have been really planning this out and uh, doing the whole thing backwards from what I did it. Okay, that will be in there nice and... Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think that's cute. Actually, you know what would really be cute, you guys? Let's see what's, let's see what's left here. Oh, look what I'm gonna do, okay. See, this is, this is how I have fun. <laughs> have fun when I create. This ribbon in it isn't as thick as I want it to be, but look at that cute little pearly kind of button or uh, buckle looking thing. Okay, how am I going to do this? Let me think about it for a minute. I'm going to cut that off. How am I going to string this through? Oh, I want it. I want that on the bottom. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Okay. 
think I'm going to do it this way so that it looks like that. Okay. So I'm going to loop this, this piece through and then back down through the bottom. And this is what you need that liquid stitch glue for. Okay. Oh, that's so cute. Okay, let me get that lined up the way I want it. Is that cute? And then I want this to kind of be spread out. So give me just a minute, you guys. I'm going to get this situated. I am putting that right on uh, the flap there so that it will be like a little closure that I can use. Okay, my liquid stitch glue. If I put enough glue on the back of here to secure that down, it's also going to hold the glue in place. So I put a bunch of glue there. I'm going to put it down on this little flap. Okay, I got a lot of glue on there. Um, it is going to dry clear. So as we're filling the back pages, that is something that I can show you in a minute. Okay, the other thing I need to do is where that hole was that I had for the button, I need to come back in and get rid of that orange paper back there. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do with that as well. As long as I have, um, well, you can see that that's a mess right now, but that's going to dry clear. I might cut these off a little bit. I just kind of cut those as we were going along. Okay, here's my button. I'm going to stick that through the hole. That shank is coming out the back. I don't have a whole lot of room there. So what I'm gonna do, I have to push that down, is, uh, oh, I lost the ribbon that I had cut for that. I just cut another piece. I had a ribbon, I'm just using this black ribbon. I cut it at a point and hang on a second. I'm gonna use my little trusty pointer that I use for everything when I'm sewing. And I'm just gonna kind of push that through. Maybe I should do this off camera and it would go easier. What do you think? Oh, it's coming. I'll be able to get it. I guess I could have threaded that ribbon through a needle and then pulled it through. But always, if you're doing something with the ribbon, always cut it longer than you want it so that you can um, cut off any ends and make it the, the size that you want it. So I strung that through. That's gonna hold that button secure onto the front. And I'm just gonna tie a double knot. And as a matter of fact, before I do that, you know what I'm gonna do just to make sure that this doesn't come apart. I'm just gonna put a little of that liquid stitch glue right in there. And then I'm just gonna tie this off in a little double knot. It might not even have to with that glue there. As a matter of fact, that might just be enough. I'm just going to put a little dab of glue underneath where I put that knot. Okay, let's. I'm going to let that dry, and then we'll come back and cut off those ribbons. Okay, because we're also... Well, I said that, but let's do this first. Because this is what we have to do. I'm going to line up the back, the front and the back together. And what I'm going to do, I am going to cut this off as long as we're going to do this. So let me get my fabric scissors. And I'm going to, I just want these to be nice little cute angled tails. That can't be in the way of my tie. And cut that a little bit shorter. So 
see if you can see what I'm doing, maybe the length of the bag. I want to cut it the other angle, I think. So that is tied off. That's going to be my little flap for the bag. Open and close. And then that button is secure on the front because we're going to use that as our closure. So let me line up the front and the back. And then what I'm going to do, okay, you guys, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> let me think about this. No, I'm just going to do it simple. I was thinking about using, I have another one of these buckles. I thought about using that on the back here, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is, <laughs> I'm thinking, can you tell I'm thinking? I was actually going to use this button. Okay, let's get this button ready. I'm going to use this button with some of the baker's twine. Let me see if I can get that in without stringing it on a needle. I I don't like blank buttons. <laughs> if I have a button, I need to have, have a string in it or thread. So I'm not sewing this on. I'm going to glue it on. So I'm just making it look like it is sewn on with this. So I tied that on just so I don't have a blank button. And I will cut those off. Because I'm getting this ready to be part of the back closure. Okay, so I have that ready. And then I'm gonna use the same black ribbon. And I just want it to be long enough. What I'm gonna do, so again, I'm gonna go longer than I need so I can always cut it shorter. That's really long. That's why if you're doing something uh, like this, if you use, if you need a, a lot of ribbon, I guess don't use anything that's too, like, pricey. If you need, I don't know why I said that, because I've used my thread gather ribbon on there. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of just lining this up with that button so that I know when I pull this back around to tie it off, it's gonna be lined up where that button is, if that makes sense. The whole time, you guys, I'm thinking, oh Lord, please let this not be cut off so that they can see what I'm doing. I have this flipped over on itself to make like a little loop. So I put enough glue on there to hold that in place. I'm putting enough glue to hold the button in place. And I really wanted to use, um, you know, bring out, I'm just gonna hold that there for a minute because this is a little bit thicker. I really wanted to bring out that pearly in the orange button from the middle. So that's why I decided just to use um, the white pearl button there. Okay, so that's the back. So this will be lined up. I'm not gonna show you yet because I want that to dry. So this will be double so that I can tie that off, wrap it around the button to use as a closure. I did leave it long because I don't know how wide this is going to end up being with all those pages stacked in. I want enough length that I'm going to be able to tie that off. So I am actually was going to start with the back pages. Hi. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, this might be a little a little tricky, only because I already have the ribbons on these and I don't want to take all the ribbon off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start loading up the pages on these little rings. So you know what I'm doing. It's just that um, it's a little bit uh, tricky right now because, again, the ribbons are already on here. So... Let's bring, bring you to a point. 
So this is the back page. I'm going to kind of go backwards. Right now, they're not in any kind of order at all. But I think I probably want like a, a little bit heavier, um, you know, paper in the back rather than just the white. So um, that's all I'm going to do is start stacking these on. I can do a couple at a time, but I just kind of want to see how this is going to go. I do have a couple here. Before, um, as I was cutting my holes, or punching the holes, I should say, I, I kind of put my pages where I was telling you where on the bottom page is where I'll put the recipe, and on the back side, it will be more of a cool, you know, image to look at. Um, that's my Rosati paper bag that I cut. So again, I'm going to put this together, but I am, I do not have any of those little round sticker circles that you put on these to keep those, um, you know, your holes from ripping. I am going to do that because hopefully this book, you know, will be flipped through here and there. So bear with me as I stack all these on. So you can see my pages aren't lining up even. You just want to make sure that you have enough room where you punch the holes that it's going to be able to fit on. A couple of them I got kind of close to the edges and I had to repunch it or um, there's just one piece I had to toss that I couldn't use because I punched the hole too close to the edge. So some of these blank pages I thought I could just um, you know, maybe write the recipe right on there for me, or that would be a good idea for you guys. On these color pages, I'm thinking more about, you know, that would be a good place. That would be a good place to actually, you know, glue a recipe. This is a little bit bigger card. You would have to get the smaller um, is it a three by five recipe card if you wanted to do that? And then you could just, I mean, look, that would be, I'm not going to pick it up right now because it's not put together yet, but that would be pretty just stitched right on there. So I'm going to try to mix this up a little bit with, um, some plain papers. This one I cut short, uh, sh not shorter, but not as wide, but I left it as a double. I just thought that would be different. So, you know, just do something different with them to make them, you know, more interesting, I guess. So whatever pleases you, that's your book. I have another piece of the Rosati's paper bag I'm gonna stick in there. And you know, you could use this side or the other side. I have a picture of my mom and grandma I'm sticking in there. Another one of those. I kind of, as I go through, I should have mixed these up a little bit more. Let me just go through and add a couple of these back here so not all the white papers are together. I guess I didn't realize I had that many. Well, I do say that <laughs> I do this. I say this and I hope you guys don't laugh at me. I'm excited about this one. I've been wanting some place to put my mom's recipes and if you guys wouldn't have goaded me on, I don't think I would have, I would have thought about it and thought about it and never actually done it. Okay, right now, these are the only pages that I have done. Let's add the front. And we'll get that snapped closed. Actually, that wasn't too bad with um, those ribbons already on there. And so far, so good. Oh, I, I lost one ribbon. <laughs> I lost one ribbon. Let me see where it came from. It came from this one. And on the ribbons, I just cut, um, I started doing these on my fabric books. I just cut um, certain length. I don't know, I think they're probably four or five inch lengths. And then tied them on the rings. And there, okay, I lost that black one. I was gonna put, 
Let's see, do I want my initials? KLT. Okay, I have, should I do this? I'm going to do this upside down so that you guys can see it. And then I guess I'll hope. These, some of the initials that you get, you actually kind of cut and then um, rub on. These are not, okay, I have to look at it and then I'll show it to you guys. Um, these just peel off. Let me see how I want to do that. I think I just want to do it straight across the bottom instead of trying to get fancy with it. I could do my name, Kelly. Do I want to put Kelly or my initials? Why is that a hard decision for me? You guys, I have enough to write Kelly. Okay, I'm going to do Kelly. You know what? <laughs> I kind of like my initials. Um, KLT. It reminds me of BLT. Since it's a since it's a recipe book, I, I changed my mind. Since I can't decide, I'm just gonna do KLT because I think it's funny that it reminds me of BLT. Gotta put a little spin on there, so I'll put a little a little off kilter here. I think I got a little bit of dirty on there for my fingers and the glue. I did. KLT. That's the front. That's the back. Okay, let's flip through just a little bit. Just to recap. Oh, let me put one of my recipes in here. My mom's recipes. I'm just going to put this one in the front since this is the day, this is the one that we did today for the day of the, let me see how I'm going to do this. That's a shorter page, so I need to make sure. Um, if I'm putting my, and you guys won't be doing this because you don't have my mom's actual column and it won't be this long, but let me glue that. I'm gonna, it's gonna have to be folded up on the bottom so it's not hanging out. So I'll tell you what I'm thinking in a minute here. So I won't have, I won't know what the recipe is unless I unfold it. So I'm gonna leave a little space at the top. i glue that on. And I'm just gonna write, and let's see. Grams veggie pizza. I like to put little hearts for my eyes, and I'm running out of room because I write so big. So let's see if I can make this work. Grams veggie pizza. And then again for me for I'm keeping my mom's columns in here. So I am gonna have to fold that up. So that's what I was saying. If I fold that up to keep it in, I won't know what the recipe is unless I flip it open. That way if I'm flipping for something. So I think I probably am gonna add just some kind of little cool tabs. There's probably all kinds of ideas in the scrapbook section of like at Joann's or any craft store. Um, you know, if you want to separate it out between desserts. But this was my whole um, idea of doing it this way, you guys, because you can stack and add just by using a bigger ring. You can have this as thick as you want. You know, you can just stack them up. So I think that's dried enough. Um, I'll show you. My idea was just to kind of... Um, tie this off, wrap it around. I'm being gentle, I'm not pulling as hard as I would because I don't want that glue to come off on the back of that button. I don't know if it's totally dry yet. It's not like using um, hot glue. Actually, I think what I would do is <clears throat> do it this way and just tie it off on the bottom. You know, if you want, if I wanted to keep it, keep it closed, closed up.
I would do it a little bit differently and tie it off, but again, this isn't dry on the back, so I don't want to pull on it too hard. The back's as cute as the front, isn't it? And let's just flip through it one more time to see. There will be different pages. Some plain. So as we go through, I'd have a cute, cute something over here and have the recipe on this page. And just keep stacking and adding. I'm really happy with that. Thank you, you guys, for uh, pushing me along to make that. This button is huge. I might not have used it, but again, um, a special button that I haven't used for anything that I thought I would use on this project. Again, the inside page. That's how that button is held on with that shank. You know, if you have a button that has holes in it, you could certainly use it all and, and punch holes where the, you know, where the holes of the buttons are and use a ribbon like that to actually stitch it on to the cardboard. I'm not sure what I'm gonna use that little bag for, but I love it, it's cute. And there's the first recipe from Shirley's Cottage in there. Tell me what you guys think, did you like that? Again, if you like the onion um, motif, and I have it, um, I have it on the paper so you get two of them for the front and the back, and if you want, the piece that says my collection of recipes from Shirley's Cottage. I have that, I will um, scan, I will send that to you. You just have to email me at blackthreadstudio at yahoo.com. So that finishes up the journal. I was gonna bring back the tassel giveaway this week and I fully intended on doing that, um, but I'm still just trying to get caught up from a lot of things. It, it did kind of go by the wayside, and um, <laughs> although I like the tassels, and they're okay, they're okay. I was making so many of them for pillows and things that I'm making that I just got tired of making them. I think that's kind of why I let it go. Plus, um, uh, not everyone was playing along, so it was getting to be where everyone who, who had played had won one, and um, but now we have new viewers, new subscribers. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I don't even have one to show you. Uh, I make a tassel and what I decided to do, let me see where I put it. Hang on a second. What I decided to do is I found this yarn that I thought was perfect. Um, so when if you get a Black Thread Studio tassel, it is always going to be out of this yarn. I use this Baker's Twine that um, Cheryl sent me, and I use that to tie it off, and it's also the hanger. And then I always add some kind of charm or button or something to it. So that is the second Saturday of every month. We'll go back to doing a tassel giveaway, so I'm going to do that in August, so you guys can watch for that. And I will tell you, I'll prompt you when I'm going to do that, but the whole, this whole year to win the tassel, you have to say in the comments, Peace on Earth, because that's what I'm putting out into the world um, this year, Peace on Earth. Not just at Christmas time, but all year. So um, if you're excited about the tassels coming back, let me know. And it's only been a couple, like this month and I think June that I did do it. I think I did it. I th so it's only been a couple months, but again, um, you've heard me say I wasn't feeling well and just because of everything, I let it go, but it's coming back. So I wanted to tell you that. And uh, I think that's all. I think that's all. So that's going to wrap up my what are we calling it? My collection of recipes from Shirley's Cottage. I hope you guys make one. And here's the thing. If you do and you're on Instagram, there is a hashtag that I have that's Black Thread Studio Peeps that you guys can go in and 
um, you can see what each other's making. I can see if you've made anything. And that is really, really fun for me. It would be fun for you guys too if you wanted to do that. So if you do, please hashtag Black Thread Studio Peeps on Instagram. I am on Facebook, but hardly, hardly at all. Instagram is um, usually more where I like to, to post things. So, okay, I am saying goodbye. I'm telling you to have a really good weekend. I thank you so much for being here. If you are a new subscriber, thank you. I hope you, um, I hope you have fun here. I. I can't tell you what to expect. It, it kind of depends on how much time I have and how I'm feeling that week and what 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 ideas I can come up with. Um, once in a while, I throw in a floss tube. I have not had a whole lot of time to cross stitch, but I do have a lot of haul that I can share. I have gotten a lot of patterns and acquired um, some new floss and linen that I'm excited about. So I'm excited to have more time to stitch. And of course, I'm still working on my, my color is block of the month. I, um, I'm getting caught up on some of the hand quilting on that. And then that will be back the second week of August as well. I'll be all caught up with that. So the second week of August, we will start be starting back up with the old schedule where I'm doing my, my color is block of the month and the tassel giveaway. So you guys have a really, really good weekend. Thanks for coming along while we made um, the recipe book. I didn't tell my mom I was gonna do this. So when she sees this, I hope she's really excited. And mom, please do not say <laughs> that would make good Christmas presents. Every time I make something, like when I did that cross stitch bracelet, um, I don't know, that was from Not Forgotten Farms from Lori. My mom immediately said, oh, that would be great Christmas presents no matter what I do. And I'm thinking, I do not have time to do that, mom. So this is for me. If uh, my siblings or kids want one, they're gonna have to make their own. So um, I might make you one, mom, but I'm not gonna make anybody else one. Thank you for being here. I really got to go. I got to cut myself off. So you guys have a good weekend. Okay, bye-bye.